Hey everyone, it's Sevi. As a continuation of my build optimization series, this video will discuss the value of attack percent versus crit damage. I recently discussed that crit value, whether crit rate or crit damage, isn't everything you should look for in an artifact, and that for attack scaling characters, you should at the very least consider ER and attack as well. We've talked about ER a bunch already, so let's look into attack. The relevant concepts being tackled here are opportunity cost and the often quoted diminishing returns which more of you are likely familiar with. Translating it to Genshin, it's the idea that the more you stack a certain stat, the more diminished the resulting DPS increase becomes. I mentioned before that there's a threshold where adding attack percent substats will have a smaller percent increase in DPS than adding crit substats, hence the diminishing returns. But that attack substat threshold is actually relatively high, and even past that point, the difference in DPS between a crit roll and an attack roll is relatively minimal. That said difference, and how small it can be, will be the focal point of this video. Again, shout out to my friend Migo for his valuable input on this topic. You can find him over on Twitch with his channel linked below. Now, let's get into it. I want to demonstrate this point in a straightforward and understandable comparison test with Kaching as our first test subject. Here's our methodology. We'll give her two artifact builds. Both builds will have no set bonuses and will keep the same flower, feather, sands, and goblet. Across these four artifacts, we see there are a lot of crit substats and a measly plus 16 flat attack substat. What we'll be changing though is the circlet. The first build will use a crit damage circlet with 15% and flat 33 attack substats. The second build will use an attack circlet with 20% crit damage and 33 flat attack. Ignore the ER and crit rate on both artifacts as they are irrelevant to the comparison. The idea is to isolate crit damage and attack and more directly compare their value. The 62.2% crit damage and 46.6% attack main stats of the circlets are about the same value of rolls, and their 15% attack and 20% crit damage substats are also roughly the same value. So we can say that these two circlets provide practically the same overall stat value, and we can just account for a small margin of error in the results. Here are the resulting attack and crit damage stats of both builds. We'll note the damage values and compute the DPS of her burst. Kitching will be holding a black sword which does not affect her burst damage at all. There are three phases to this test. First, we'll record Kitching's raw damage with no external buffs at all. Next, she'll be buffed by a 4-piece noblesse user which gives 20% attack, around 4 substats worth of attack. And lastly, she'll be buffed by Bennett using a 4-piece Noblesse, which gives a ton of attack. So with those build and test notes, it's time to see what the DPS difference is. First, here's the raw damage side by side. With sword comes shadow. When looking at the tabled results, I've already computed the DPS, which takes into account both non-crit and crit hits, as we can see, the attack circlet build came out with very slightly higher damage both on the non-crit hits and the crit hits. Generally, increasing your character's attack stat not only gives better non-crit damage, but gives better base damage for your crit hits to scale from. We see at this point that Kaching's DPS was higher from increasing her attack rather than from increasing her crit damage. However, the difference is so small. Now, it's time to consider buffs. What happens when we buff Kaching with a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set from her teammate? Nowhere to hide. With a Noblesse buff, the difference between the two builds now shifts to favor the crit damage build. Here, we're starting to see the diminishing returns of attack percent substats as compared to crit damage substats. But still, the damage difference is very, very, very negligible at less than 1%. Now let's add the Noblesse effect and Bennett into the mix, whose burst effectively adds a massive amount of attack. Of course, the crit damage build will be predictably higher, but the question is, by how much?
Because Bennett adds so much attack to Kaching, it's now much more optimal to build into Kaching's own crit stats rather than her attack stat, assuming you'll always run her with Bennett. But even then, you'll notice that the attack circlet build falls behind only by about 5%, which still isn't bad. In summary, we've seen three different cases. Raw damage, a noblesse buff, and a Bennett plus noblesse buff. At the start, attack percent substats were increasing DPS more than the crit damage substats. But as we added more attack buffs, crit damage was the better stat to build. So where is that threshold at which crit damage becomes a better choice than attack percent? This graph shows that once you get around 8 to 9 substat rolls of both attack percent and crit, the percent increase in DPS gets higher from building more crit stats. Remember that we're talking about percent increase in DPS. This means that whether you add more attack percent or crit substats, as long as you're adding substats, your DPS will increase. It's just a choice of which substat type, whether attack percent or crit, will increase DPS more over the other. You can see that per substat, the difference in increase is quite small, but the more substats you add, the more that difference will stack up, which is why it's useful to know how to count your substats. Take note that these substats account for weapon substats and character ascension stats as well. I'll also disclaim here that this graph is a general consideration for attack scaling DPSs. And among attack scaling characters, there will be slight variations among the characters and weapons base attacks. For example, 4-star characters with 4-star weapons would usually have a threshold of 7 attack percent substats due to their lower base attack. This is important because if you tried to replicate our demo earlier and the number of attack percent from substats or set bonuses in your build are already past the threshold, then a crit damage circlet will immediately pull ahead. You can apply the same concept to characters whose damage scales from different stats, such as defense, to which you can go back to my substat counting video. One takeaway is that you do want that attack percent when building characters, especially in team comps where Bennett or Sara isn't present. Take freeze comps for example, where having Bennett or Sara would interfere with the reactions, and you have to rely on Noblesse and maybe Thrilling Tales buffs, and pay attention to your character's own attack stats. Ayaka is the best example of this. At a high investment 4-piece Blizzard Strayer plus Miss Splitter build, Ayaka actually has so much damage bonus and crit damage multipliers already. In my Ayaka test, replicating the same switching of the circlet like Kaching, the attack circlet build won both in raw damage and with a noblesse buffer. The difference is, again, quite minimal. But the point we can get here is that balancing the attack when you already have a lot of multiplier values can actually lead to better DPS than if you had stacked more and more crit. But generally speaking, yes, you will encounter diminishing returns from continually building attack, at which point building your crit damage up is better. But if you're expecting more of double digit percent differences than a single digit percent difference, you might be disappointed and end up putting crit damage on a pedestal. By recognizing this small difference, we can realize that chasing crit still isn't necessarily always the best way to go, especially when attack stats can provide close damage value anyway. However, one short video alone cannot provide a complete case-to-case -case basis coverage of all situations. If you're really interested in entering this domain of min-maxing, using the Genshin Optimizer will be the easiest route. Still, it's good to know the principles behind all these mechanics to help you with your general build goals. And that's going to be all for this build optimization video. Let me know in the comments if it helped you out. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more Genshin Impact guides and content, and I will see you all soon. Take care!